All right, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I've made this informational video is because when I first bought my travel trailer, I had no clue how an electrical system worked in a travel trailer. I searched the internet for as many informational videos and diagrams as I could. You know, I decided to put the most important things I've learned in this video. It can get extremely overwhelming when you're trying to research how your RV's electrical system works. Without visually seeing a diagram that demonstrates how it works, it can be difficult to grasp the concept. So I'm hoping this video gives you guys an idea. Please show some love, tap that like button, subscribe for more educational videos. Unless my videos suck, then uh, don't, I guess. Let's jump into it. When you're unplugged from shore power, the battery sends 12 volts DC to your fuse box until the battery runs out of power. Now you see the little sign that crosses off the shore power. So that means when you're unplugged from shore power, the battery sends 12 volts to the fuse box, you know, to power the 12 volt DC fuse box as well as anything connected to it. Now the battery sends 12 volts DC to the fuse switch first. This fuse protects an overload to your fuse box. 12 volts DC goes from your fuse switch to your fuse box. The fuse switch which is important to know about in case you ever find yourself not getting 12 volt DC power coming from your battery wires into your fuse box. If you have a good battery with 12 volts and it's not reaching the fuse box, this fuse could be the culprit. Let's go on to the next one. In this demonstration, I show you when you are connected to shore power, how your converter actually draws household power, 110, 120 volt AC alternating current from the shore power and converts it it to battery power 12 volts DC direct current to power your fuse box when connected to shore power the converter again draws in 120 volts alternating current and converts it to battery power 12 volts DC this runs 12 volt lights and uh, any 12 volt electrical components which in some RVs could be a water heater or something else on 12 volt DC battery power. In the next demonstration, the converter uses the shore power to charge the battery system. This is a little n side note. The converter helps your battery send 12 volt DC to appliances, but without a good battery system, the appliances won't work right when relying solely on your power converter here. Again, this shows how the shore power sends 120 volt alternating current through to your circuit breakers it sends it to the breakers and the converter to charge the battery system so your converter goes through there and it charges your battery system let's move on to this next slide when your camper is connected to shore power it sends 120 volts through to the main circuit breaker as well as other 120 volt breakers now the GFCI outlet is important to know about because it has its own breaker switch built inside the outlet itself. The GFCI outlets are specially designed to instantly stop the flow of electricity once the constant stream of electricity is disrupted by the smallest splash of water. These outlets are usually next to where you're washing your hands in the bathroom. The littlest splash of water will instantly flick this breaker switch off in this outlet and you may have had to push that button before to get your outlets to work. Let's move on to this next slide. In this next demonstration, it shows you how your shore power sends 120 volts to your main circuit breaker. The 120 volt alternating current power coming from the shore power powers your main circuit breaker, your GFCI. It powers your microwave, maybe something like your water heater, I've seen you know your AC unit as well now on this next slide guys I want to talk about how these breakers trip you may or may not have encountered this problem before but let's give you guys an idea of why these may trip or why this happens your RV has a maximum threshold of electricity that can flow through it at any given time. So it's either a 30 amp or a 50 amp. I've seen smaller ones. In this case, this diagram, we're going to go with 
my trailer, which is a 30 amp. Whether it's a 30 amp or 50 amp, it has a maximum threshold allowed to flow through it at only one given time. You need to make a mental note in your head of all the electrical components you intend to power in your RV. This demonstration will be for a 30 amp travel trailer. We'll see you got 30 amps max, right? See your, your hair dryers going in, in there. Your girlfriend's got it going. That's 12 amps right there. Your son's watching TV. He's watching cartoons in the other room. That's 1.5 amps right there. Now add that together. That's 13.5 amps right there. Your converter is constantly working, so we forgot to add that first. Well, now we're at 21.5 amps. See how close we're getting? Uh-oh, that AC just kicked on, guys. Guess what? We just hit... 35 amps my travel trailer just broke the circuit and my main circuit breaker here just flicked on me i gotta go flick it now think of your circuit breaker switch like a defense mechanism that protects all of the electrical components in your rv without the circuit breaker the electricity basically would fry your electrical components your electrical wiring or even worse it could cause a fire so you know luckily we have really smart people that conveniently invented the circuit breaker let's move on to the next one when connected to 30 amp or 50 amp shore power the converter draws around 8 amps out of the 30 or 50 amp maximum threshold your RV can withstand from shore power. So just remember, add that converter in there. Whatever ampage your converter draws usually can tell on you know any electrical component what amps it takes up when it's powering or on. So you know just keep a note of that. Now the converter draws in 120 volts alternating current power into the converter. It converts that power to 12 volt direct current power and sends it to the fuse box when plugged into short power. The fuse box powers 12 volt direct current electrical components such as your ceiling vents, lights, water pump, water heater, and other 12 volt direct current appliances when connected to shore power. The 30 or 50 amp power cord also powers your main circuit breaker, which powers the AC, refrigerator on electric, the microwave, and all of the 120 volt alternating current outlets. When not connected, or disconnected from shore power. The AC unit, the refrigerator on electric mode, the microwave, and the 120 volt AC outlets will not work unless you have an inverter. The converter stops drawing eight amps it needs to convert 120 volts to 12 volts DC. So as soon as you disconnect from that shore power, the converter stops drawing eight amps from shore power. It stops converting that 120 volts to 12 volts DC. When disconnected, the battery system takes over and starts sending 12 volts direct current to the fuse box and only powers the fuse box until the battery or batteries are no longer charged. A converter converts 120 volts alternating current to 12 volts direct current. I just wanted to give you guys an idea what the difference is between a converter and an inverter. I see a lot of confusion. Just wanted to let you know a converter converts 120 volts alternating current to 12 volts battery power direct current. Okay, the converter converts household power to battery power. The inverter converts battery power, 12 volts DC, to house power, to 120 volts AC. So next slide up, I wanted to discuss the fuse box and the difference between the fuse box and the circuit breaker box. The fuse box is either powered by the converter when it's connected to shore power or it's powered by the 12 volt DC battery system. The circuit breaker box is powered by the 120 volt alternating current shore power. Now your fuse box has a fuse that protects your electrical components from surging too many amps at once. So you've definitely probably seen the fuse box before, whether it's, you know, 15 amp fuses, 20 amp fuses, 7.5 amp fuses. Those fuses protect your electrical components from frying because the fuse blows first before it sends too much voltage through the wiring. In your circuit breaker, a circuit breaker is designed to instantly disconnect power or trip once it exceeds its max amperage. You'll see a number on each circuit breaker in the circuit breaker box that represents the max amperage that's allowed to flow through that certain circuit breaker. Once too many amps 
exceed through that breaker, it trips because it's protecting the electrical components from frying. The fuse box side, the fuse will blow if the amp current exceeds past the fuse's max amperage. On the circuit breaker side, the circuit breaker will trip if the amp current exceeds past the breaker's max amperage. 120 volt alternating current amp rating scale. Just give you guys an idea of different electrical components in your house that may be taking up certain amps. And just take a mental note, you know, the AC takes up 13 amps, the TV's about 1.5. A microwave is 13 amps. You know, just take a mental note of this stuff as you're using up power in your travel trailers. If you're exceeding too many amps, you're going to trip that breaker. It's not going to be good. On the 12 volt DC amp rating scale, we have a light that takes about one amp. Keep this in mind as well. You know, your fuse box is going to have stuff connected to it as well, taking up amps. And, you know, not as many amps as the breaker side, but you know, your stereo has four amps. The porch light, maybe one amp, uh, you know, the roof vent, the range hood, three amps. The refrigerator on gas mode takes up two amps. Just, you know, keep this mental note in your head, guys. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I had for you guys in this demonstration. I really hope you guys learned something in this. If you did, smash that like button, give me a like. I would really appreciate it. I did put a lot of effort and time into this. If you guys want more educational videos like this in the future and want to learn something new, fun, something exciting, and you want me to explain it the best way I can, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, DJ Charles signing out, y'all.